Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with kind of like a tips and tricks style video. I had planned on making the video of building and painting Natalia Vedra from the new Cities of Sigmar, the Lioness model. She's absolutely incredible in today's video, but I decided that I think my time will be best spent um, focusing on the lion itself, the manticore that she rides into battle on top of. And that got me thinking about um, the fear that a lot of people have around painting these kind of big intimidating models, these monsters. As you can see, I am not burdened by such fear. I am more than happy to slap a paint job on a monster and get, I think, fairly nice results for uh, kind of like a little bit of effort. So what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to paint up the manticore to the best of my ability as quickly as possible and get a really nice result and uh, document the stages of that for you guys in this video step by step and focusing on a few kind of key bits and pieces and that'll hopefully help you uh, kind of overcome your fears and get some paint on some monsters. I know we all have some beautiful models sitting in our backlog that are sitting there because we are too afraid to paint it. That is the whole purpose of my channel was to alleviate the fears of painters and help them to move forward in painting their models. So if this video inspires you to pull out a model that you've been too afraid to do and get some paint on, that'd be fantastic. If that does happen, please let me know in the comments below that it did happen and what the model was. And if you do manage to finish it off, please post it on your Instagram and tag me. I would love to see you guys' work. Before I get into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. You guys are amazing. Without you guys, I would not be able to continue doing what I'm doing, painting these crazy monsters for a video, for instance. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there are links to it below. You get access to things like a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. So I think that's a pretty good reward. It's 52 extra videos a year, not bad. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, let's get painting this crazy manticore. Okay guys, this is the manticore of Talia Vedra. I understand completely when uh, people see these kind of models for the first time and like, the, th the fear kind of kicks in. I've heard it all before. I worked in games for 15 years. The amount of times customers have said things like, you know, oh, I could never paint like that or I wouldn't be able to do that justice or anything like that. And it used to always break my heart, the idea that someone is denying themselves an awesome model that they really want because they feel like they wouldn't be able to do it. So what I want to do today is show you how you can break down a model like this into such simple, easy and effective steps. You'll be shocked by the result at the end of this and how I got there. So the model was sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear, giving me a great base coat for contrast paints. And then to get all of the like skin, fur, feathers, all those bits done on the entire thing, I'm going to use four paints, just four. Four paints will get the entire lion painted, apart from like things like nails and the mouth and stuff. I'm talking about all the feathers and all the fur. So I start with skeleton horde and I paint this all over the beautiful lion mane, all over the face and all over the first row of feathers. As you can see, the feathers are kind of stepped into like three tiers of feathers. So we're gonna do the first tier with the skeleton horde, and we're gonna pull it back throughout the rest of the lion's body, down underneath the model and his hind legs. I also decided to paint in between all of the like armored bits of the um, scorpion's tail in that as well, but I didn't do that here. I realized I should do that later on. So you will see them just appear as skeleton horde in a little bit. After that, we jump over to Gore Grunt of Fur, and we're going to go into the next line of feathers and we're going to do that in Gorgrunt of Fur. Very simple, very easy steps. It's sometimes like, you know, I feel like the community of creators makes things um, seem even more complicated, the kind of steps that they take in their painting videos. And obviously they, they achieve staggering results, absolutely beautiful. But for the average painter like me and you who are out there just trying to get some models painted up, I think they can make some models even more intimidating. Like if you look at their desk when they're finished painting a model and they've used 60, 70 paints to do it, that can be quite daunting. Now I understand that, I feel that as well. All these different blends, a mix two to one of this color and that color and a drop of this. Um, can I not just use paint please? So here's a Gorgrunt of fur across the, the second layer of one of the wings. As you can see, it's quite an easy. It's a nice kind of chocolatey brown color. And then it is across the second wing as well. Super simple, nothing to be worried about. Third color, Black Templar Contrast. We are gonna paint this along the third line of feathers across the wings. And we're also gonna do the armored parts of the scorpion tail. You can see now that the skeleton horde has been painted between all of the, um, the segments of the tail, which I realized was a good idea after I'd already painted the skeleton horde bits, but we won't worry about that. 
Like I said, you want to make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies, make sure there's no white shining through between any of the feather layers. This layer of feather is obviously the most difficult because it, as it gets to the very tips of the wing, they kind of turn and curve. Beautiful effect, love it. And yeah, we just make sure you don't miss any little white spots. Okay, so we have applied three colors to this model so far. Skeleton Horde, Gorgon to Fur, Black Templar. That's it, three colors. And we already have a really nice solid base coat on all of the line. I think that the, the detail we're after uh, kind of pulling forward with the contrast is fantastic. And obviously some people could leave it like this and be super, super happy with it. I think it needs to be pulled up just a tiny bit more. And this is where that fourth color comes in. Four colors, I told you, I'm gonna paint the line with four colors. What color do you think it is? Can you guess? Well, you'd probably be wrong. It's just a bone color. Any bone, proxy white, you shafty bone, screaming skull, any slightly off white that you like. I'm gonna go for screaming skull. And then just dry brush it across the uh, entire body of this piece again. It's gonna catch all of those razor sharp details, all the feather details, and all the different layers. And not only will it highlight all of the different colors, it will also pull all those colors closer together, make them look like they belong in the same creature, the same animal. So this is going to go across all the wings, lion's head, scorpion tail, doesn't matter. Everything that you've put color on so far, you're going to dry brush with that screaming skull. Super simple and effective step. And in a second, I'm going to show you uh, the kind of models back and you will see one wing that has been dry brushed and one wing that hasn't and you'll see the staggering difference that this dry brush does give i've used this kind of technique for years on loads of different things and i've shown the technique to a bunch of different people they're always shocked by the result you can get by adding just a very simple dry brush a lot of people need to scoff at the idea of a dry brush it's just another tool in your arsenal for getting models painted and I don't know about you, but I don't have time to be spending weeks painting up these models and individually highlighting each and every feather. Got too many other models to do. <laughs> so here is one wing dry burst up. You can see the difference. I think that's a staggering change from a simple dry brush. Obviously, it wants to be super light. Make sure you've got literally nothing left on your brush. Remember, it's so much easier to add a little bit more paint to your brush and dry brush over it again than it is to over dry brush something and then try and take paint off. So please go as light as possible. It doesn't matter if you need 50 passes on the wing. Just do it. Make sure there is not too much paint on it. I'm showing you the whole technique again on the other wing just because I need to. I don't, can't overemphasize enough how important a simple technique like this is and the difference that will play on a model like this. So, so far, I was I showed this model off on stream uh, last night um, on Twitch, and people thought that I'd put in so much work into the wings, and I was kind of giggling at them then. And you know, like, I can't wait for you guys to see the video and realize that to paint the lion is four paints. Look how beautiful that face is. It's just skeleton horde dry brush with bone. That's it. That's the whole thing. And obviously it looks a little bit plain now, but that's because all of the rest of the colors around it haven't been painted yet. So once we dive in and start getting the rest of those colors done, it'll all pull together and look beautiful. Another thing I'm going to show you guys is how to paint the inside of a mouth. So the mouth on models, which Warhammer Monsters mouths are usually just such a big key feature. They're usually, you know, gaping wide and you can see tongues and you can see all the inside and all that kind of bits and pieces. And I'm going to show you the easiest way that I found to paint it. So the first thing I do is grab Volupus Pink Contrast and paint that inside the entire mouth. You paint it over all the teeth, everything. Everything inside the mouth gets done with Volupus Pink. And you're asking why the hell you do the teeth as well? It's because when we start to layer up and highlight the teeth, we want to see that gum showing. And even leaving some of it at the very end of the tooth, you know, where the gum connects to it, just adds a little bit more. And also make sure you don't miss anything. After you have applied the uh, Volupus Pink, grab yourself some Xandru Dust. And do the first base coat on the teeth. Super quick, super easy. Xandri dust, all the teeth. Make sure you don't miss any. And it's a lion, so it's got a lot of teeth. Use a fine point of brush. You can add a little touch of water into it. No big deal. Obviously, on a, a model like this, the uh, the mouth is actually still quite small compared to some of the other monsters in the Warhammer world, but a lot of the monsters are huge, and I use the same technique no matter what I'm doing. This is how I did all my mouths and all my squeaks, and those have big ass mouths. Okay, Carrienburg Crimson was used then uh, inside the entire mouth to shade everything.
all the gums, all the teeth, all the everything. After that, pink horror was used to highlight all of the gums and the tongue very lightly. It's really hard to video this particular part because it's just a small piece and I'm trying to get my hands on my brush and in at the mouth. But all I'm trying to do is add a little bit of touch of pink back into the gums. I'm not going crazy. I'm not trying to give it full coverage or anything like that. It's just a few scratchy lines along gums, along the tongues and around the, the bottoms of the teeth and stuff. Nothing crazy. After we get that done, we are going to go back to our trusty Screaming Skull. And we're going to add the last highlight to the teeth. This time it's going to be about halfway down and then paint it down to the tip. Super quick, very effective, not difficult. I do find it funny though, it's, this, it's four paints to paint the mouth and four paints to paint the entire body of this beast. Obviously I've been doing the nails on the, the lion's paws, the same thing. I just did the Makota's Andrew Dust and then a quick highlight of Screaming Skull. So if you take off the bridling and all of the other bits and pieces, if you do take the monster as a whole, I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow contrast in his eyes and then that's nine paints. I used nine paints to paint the entire beast. I mean, I think that's a nice achievable number of paints to ask somebody to, to have to paint a monster. I mean, the majority of people are going to have a bunch of these colors already. They might need to get one or two. And I think that's another thing that's super important when it comes to um, like tutorials online or videos to help people get more models painted. Is the idea that you've already spent 100 euro or 80 pound or whatever this model costs um, to get this model in your hand. You've got the tools and the glues to put it together. You shouldn't have to then go out and spend 100 quid on paints to get it done and then not use those paints for any other projects. Kind of, it's, it's just crazy. Right, I'm not particularly going to show you in crazy detail how to do the rest of the model. I'm going to grab some Blood Angel Red Contrast for all of the barding and the reins. Gargax Sewers was grabbed for all of the barding and the, the soft saddle parts. I'm not going to go into as much detail explaining this. I mean, I've shown this off on you know, painting the the horses or the infantry or any of those are the bits pieces i show you, you paint leather and metal and stuff like that already you can see what i mean though but the face being broken up a little bit more just those little straps the little bit of barding around his face really helps lead belts was painted onto all of the armor panels i'm also not going to show you how to paint the rider itself i painted her on stream last night while i got all her base coats and washes on stream if you're wondering i do stream on twitch every tuesday and thursday evening 8 p.m irish time to 10 p.m so two little two hour slots of four hours in total and a lot of people use them as their kind of guaranteed painting time throughout the week they jump on have a bit of a chat get some painting done have a laugh helps keep us all accountable and um, so if that's something you think you might need in your uh and your hobby time is some uh, some accountable time for painting please feel free to jump on link in the twitch below give us a follow and then yeah jump on it's a lot of fun recipe armor gold was then used for all of the uh like raised effects on the armor panel all that nice filigree obviously this lady is the commander-in-chief of the free city so she's gonna have some pretty nice equipment her mount being one of them Okay, with the base coats done on all of those parts, and once again, that was a red, a silver, a gold, and a brown. We're going to throw null oil all over all of those parts to shade them all down. And while that uh, shade is drying, I thought we'd take a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is, of course, Air Hobbies, a fantastic independent stockist here in Ireland. If you are looking for any awesome hobby products and you are from the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland and you want to get your hands on them, please check out their website. It's absolutely fantastic. They are wall to wall, floor to ceiling, stacked with awesome products. They always continually rotate and increase their range. So there's always something new to see week to week. I know they've got a couple of special things planned for Black Friday and of course a couple of Christmas deals coming up as well. So make sure you check in with them on a regular basis to see what they have going on. My favorite feature has always been that if you spend 60 euro or more on their website, you get free next day delivery to your front door in Ireland. This has saved my bacon on more than one occasion when I run out of glue or spray for a project that I need to get my hands on ASAP. These guys have really saved me. They update their stock every single week, so there's always something new to see. 
and they are always a big supporter of the channel. So once again, a huge thank you to Air Hobbies for sponsoring today's video. Links to them below. Now it's time to highlight and I will show you a little bit of her because as I was highlighting uh, up the armor panels in the red, I was going along and painting up the the writer herself, Miss Talia. Um, she's playing into two other component parts for the her big huge backdrop on her throne or saddle and then her herself. You may notice there that I use Mephisto on red air. I tend to lean towards the air paints for reds to layer with. I just find them to be basically like pre-thinned, really smooth. They still give me great results. I just like working with them a lot better. Here's the throne and Talia herself. As you can see, I've been using a lot of contrast. Same colors though, it's just gold, red. Uh, even the, thr the throne itself is skeleton horde, the wood skeleton horde. So no extra colors have been added in there except for a bit of Croxagor scales for her mace, which you don't have to choose to do that. Pick up any of the four different weapons that she wants. Evil Sun Scarlet was then brought in to uh, highlight the red for a final time. Once again, I wanted that to pop out. She is from that city where red is the primary color. Obviously making that stand out quite heavily is important and helps to break up some of the neutral tones that exist on this manticore. You can see how easy the Evil Sun Scarlet flows off the brush. Once again, another uh, air paint. They're the only two air paints I use uh, for this particular project. And showing you very quickly that I'm doing the same thing across her. Same tone, so it all matches in together. Super simple, super easy. Except I'm not here to show you how to paint her. It's more about the monster. I really do hope that, you know, in the process of showing you this, you have learned something. It is important that the main purpose of my channel, or at least I feel the main purpose of my channel, is to alleviate fears. Stop people being afraid to paint. Get their model done. Be proud of them. You'll always be proud of something you've painted more so than one that you've left in a box in a cupboard for 10 years. At the end of the day, if you didn't do anything with the model, it is just a waste of money. <laughs> okay, going back to layering up a little bit with the metallics. So all I did was grab Lead Belcher again, which is the same color I used as the base coat. And using that to highlight all the silver and all the gold across the entire model. That includes all the lion and all of Talia herself. Super quick and effective way of highlighting those pieces. It's funny how you don't really realize that the model is coming together so well until you get to kind of like late in the process. And then you take a stop back and be like, wait a minute, this thing's nearly finished. <laughs> Cottage on flesh was used to uh, layer up all of the leather parts. And even me, who's being super conscious to use kind of as few paints as possible, is still probably going to run up to about 20 paints to get this thing done. So just imagine what you would be like if you weren't being conscious of that. So here is the lion, or manticore, I keep on the lion because it's so focused on the lion motif, but the manticore fully painted up. I think for the manticore itself, there was only about 12 paints, 13 paints used. Super, super delighted with the result. I really love it. I have to add some tufts and some color into the base, but I don't have, I'm not 100% sure what the final verdict will be on my basing scheme. I know it's going to be this earth, but as for which tufts and stuff I put on, I don't know yet, so I didn't stick any on. I loved how it is. I'm going to show you now what it looks like with her sitting on the back. As you can see, I think it makes a really beautiful centerpiece to my Cities of Sigmar army. I'm super pleased and proud of the result that I achieved here today. If you would be pleased with the model I was painted like this, please let me know in the comments below. If this has helped you to, in any way, shape or form, pick up a brush and get a model that you might have been a little bit nervous about started, then also let me know in the comments. I'd love to know that. If you managed to get a model finished that you started that you were a little bit nervous of and you want to share it, post it on your Instagram, tag me. I would love to see it all and that would make me very happy. I've taken a couple of high-res images of her uh, very happy with her. Like I said, I genuinely am super pleased with how she turned out. And uh, now I just have to paint the rest of my Free Cities army so I can uh, play some games, which I'm also excited for. So hopefully that'll happen in the next, I don't know, couple of weeks. A few final images, close-ups on the beautiful lion head. And uh, thank you guys for sticking around for this slightly longer than usual video. I hope you enjoy it. There we have it, guys. You do not need to make painting big models scary. 
the kind of tools we have access to in regards to the, the different types of paints we have, the different types of brushes that we have, the access to a million different little things that help us get models painted really fast and really easily really does mean that there should be no fear. When I started the hobby years and years and years and years and years ago, things were a hell of a lot more difficult. Putting big giant metal models together was a disaster. Getting paint to stick to those models was even worse. Any slight slip of a hand, you chip paint off, arms cracked off, everything was ruined. It was a nightmare. In this current amazing day that we live in, when it comes to the selection of miniatures that we have to paint, it has never been easier to get models on the tabletop looking cool. I hope you've learned something from this video, even a tiny hint of anything to help you get your models on the table. I've decided that one of the things that I'm going to do, um, well basically come about, came about due to me making this video, is I think I want to do a challenge in the new year. I'm thinking Face Your Fear February is one of the ones I want to do. And that the idea is that us as a community will reach into our backlogs and pull out models that used to scare us and try and get them done. In fact, forget the try, we're going to get them done. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a little bit on how to paint Talia, the amazing new Commander Manticore model for the Free Cities. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.